gobbledygooker. Screw Thanksgiving. We got pay-per-views to reviews. Yes, we do. We have plenty of pay-per-views to reviews. Pay-per-reviews. Yes, we have them in our sights. Um, Mikey, let's immediately, let's get straight into our reviews. Um, let's talk about TakeOver War Games. War Games was so good. Every match was so good. Right? Right? Uh, every match but, is but so good. But what else does let... it do with the TakeOver, honestly? Good, great, I mean, great point. It's, uh, every TakeOver lives up to the hype. And I, do you think it always lives up to this? Do you think it gets better and better every pay-per-view? Because this one felt, I mean, top down, every match felt really good. But, like, it, it's definitely getting to that point where, like, every match is sort of like, oh, my gosh, beautiful. Bonkers insane. Uh, uh, let's get down the match card. First off, uh, the surprise match matchup that we weren't ex- wasn't announced, but we ended up getting for seven seconds: Matt Riddle defeating Cassius Ono with a knee to the skull. I mean, there's not much to say there, right? It's just, <laughs> but it didn't really it didn't really add takeover at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I, if anything, it added to just the mystique of Matt Riddle. Plus, Cassius Ono's Ono's selling. Here, taking that after he gets skull hit in the face with that knee, and he gets he gets up and <laughs> he's just like stumbling around. He's got jelly legs. That was really good. Uh, yeah, seven seconds. Not much we can really say. Just really good match. Probably can't really give a rating to it because it was only seven seconds. Was like, it was a knee. <laughs> yeah, it was a knee. It was a good. It was a good match. You can watch probably on the YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, they actually they actually played the whole thing during uh, NXT on Wednesday. They just like. They were going over TakeOver, and they just played the whole match. <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you at, at that point? Um, next up was, of course, Shayna Baszler defeating Kyrie Sane 2-1 to one in a 2 out of 3 falls match for the NXT Women's Championship. Ooh, I'm starting to think Shayna Baszler can't win against Kyrie Sane without the help of the uh, without the help of others. I can't remember their names right now because I'm very tired. But I'm starting to feel like Shayna Baszler can't beat Kyrie Sane on her own. Yeah, which is interesting character development because Kyrie Sane beat Shayna Baszler in the Mae Young mm-hmm. Classic, and then Shayna Baszler was pretty much easily def- was able to easily defeat Kyrie Sane pretty much after that, and then Kyrie Sane came back stronger. <laughs> yeah, and then I get yeah, and then I guess now Kyrie Sane's stronger. Shayna Baszler's like, okay, I'm not strong enough to do this. I have friends here. I'm just gonna use my friends. And then Kyrie Sane used her friends as well in Dakota Kai, who was previously feuding with Shayna Baszler and Io Shirai, who did a beautiful moonsault in skinny jeans, <laughs> which was unbelievable. Io Shirai puts Charlotte Flair's moonsault to Honestly, shame. Honestly, yes, because that moonsault was unreal. Unreal. Uh, and then, and then, obviously, immediately after that moonsault, Sheena Baszler essentially gets that win. I really like. I actually really like that Kyrie ending. Sane. How she reversed the, the like she, Sheena Baszler basically just was like, "All right, just taking this one for the te- taking this one for the win here." She's like, "I'm just gonna take this elbow and get the pin," you know? Because like it's not like mm-hmm. she dodged it or anything, mm-hmm. but she took the elbow straight to the chest and was like, "Oh, all right," and like she was probably hurting. Oh yeah. Uh, where does it go from here? I guess we're looking at a three on three at some point. I'm hoping it's going towards uh, Kyrie saying getting called up soon. That is also a case. Um, or I mean, also there's always the the other three horsemen women coming up for Ronda. Like, feels like that could be at any point, really. Mm-hmm. That that's just at any point when like Ronda or I don't, like. I- I was like, I don't know about that actually because Ronda is like the biggest baby face in the company right now. I don't know if she would. I don't know if they would call her up. I don't know if they would call up Baszler and the other two, who are three heels right now, and just put stick them with Ronda. I feel like that would be weird. The other problem is like with the four horsewomen versus four horsewomen storyline is that like. Are you gonna do babyface versus va- babyface? You're gonna do heel babyface because in that situation, who is the heels? The four horse horsewomen of D- UFC or four horsewomen of WWE? Mm-hmm. Like, like immediately, it's like it feels like the four horsewomen of WWE should be the babyfaces, should be the good guys because they're defending WWE, their homebred talent. Yeah, that's what I would think would happen. I think because also already. Three out of the four people on the four horsemen of 
UFC are already heel. They would just have to turn Ronda, which seems like something they wouldn't do. So yeah, that's know. the other thing. That's the other thing. Why turn Ronda when she's presumably? I, don't, I, I assume think, she's making money. I think a, I think a heel Ronda could help her a lot. You know, mm-hmm. just just I just think... let her just let her start like tearing through people. Like she's supposedly the baddest woman on the planet, but whenever she comes to the ring and like does any promo, she's like all smiles and stuff like that. And like, sure, she'll cut like one badass promo every once in a while. But, mm-hmm. like, when Becky is cutting those literally every time she grabs a mic, it doesn't feel like – it just – I don't know. There's I just don't really get in – I'm not into the Ronda character right now, I guess. Yeah, Ronda definitely needs help with her promo work. She She's picked up wrestling really quickly, but uh, she yeah, definitely no, needs help on that she, promo work. She's definitely learning, and she's definitely wrestling very well, but I'm just not into her character right now. Like, the way yeah. she's – just being like, oh, I'm Ronda Rousey. Look at me. I'm like, okay. And it's like, mm-hmm. we get it. Uh, how many meatballs do you give this Shayna Baszler Kyrie Sane match? Uh, I'll give it a solid four. I think it was pretty good. Okay. Okay. Solid four meatballs for Shayna and Kyrie. What about Alistair Black defeating Johnny Gargano? Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. The storytelling in that match. Just the, the storytelling, mm-hmm. just the wrestling. That match was mm-hmm. apps. I think that. Honestly, very close. Think that was the match of the night. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I'm very close cuz Dream we'll get to it, but Dream and Champa was also very good. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was definitely. I mean, yeah, the storytelling in this match was god, there's something about Johnny Gargano that just his character and the storytelling he's able to do in the ring is just god. Damn. I mean, could one argue that this may be Alistair Black's best match i honestly it might be i think it's either this mm-hmm. one or his almost or the one with almost was also very good oh yeah yeah i do want to just take a quick note to talk about gargano's entrance and him coming out mm-hmm. and being all baby face and him coming and just hearing the booze and his face like dropping for like a second and then going and then like snapping back into being baby face and like high-fiving a fan oh my god that just that little bit at entrance was like was so good for telling what Johnny is like what Johnny is becoming and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like he came out doing his whole it's thing and he was like all the... smiles and then he heard the booze and his and he just was like, Oh, oh, oh all right. Uh and then he like shook himself out of it and kept being all smiles again. It was like but for like that half a second though, he was like, Oh, maybe I'm the bad guy. Oh, it's so good. It's so he's good. Just like in f- he's just in full denial. He is. He really, really is. And I think that's like a really cool uh, character thing they got working with him. And I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Johnny is – Johnny's character is something else. I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes mm-hmm. for him. Me too. Um, definitely. Uh, what, 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 what sort of meatball rating do you give on this match? It sounds uh, like it's yeah, I think, I think this might be a, a, a five meatball. It was so good. I was mm-hmm. on the edge of my seat. That, like, I haven't, I haven't been this into like this surprised, I guess, by wrestling in a while. Like mm-hmm. since I started watching NXT. I used to be able to, like, all right, that's going to be a two count, that's going to be a two count, and there's the finish, you know? But, like, with NXT, everything could be a finish. So it's, like, I fully mark out for NXT. on Like, any takeover, I just I just mark the fuck. It's so good. <laughs> I'm, like, I mm-hmm. – every near fall has me, like, go, oh, come on. Like, go, oh, that could have been it. Like, I was freaking out that whole time I was watching that match. Speaking of close calls, Tomasa Ciampa versus Velveteen Dream for the NXT Championship. Tomasa Ciampa picking up the win and retaining oh, his championship. His that Goldie. match was good. That match was very, very good. I, mm-hmm. I is... adore Velveteen Dream. <laughs> Vel- I think, honestly, Velveteen Dream is my favorite wrestler on NXT. Almost favorite wrestler, period. I, I love watching Velveteen Dream do anything. <laughs> yeah. I, his character is so, you know, he, he just draws, he's so enticing. Like, he just draws you in. He's so, like, 
anything he does, every takeover, you're excited because now he has this precedent of what he's going to wear, what be at takeover. Oh my god, the the Hulk Hogan get ups again. Yeah, I did. I heard something really interesting, a really interesting point mm-hmm. made on one of my favorite wrestling podcasts, Tyson Fights, mm-hmm. where they were saying like, it might be a, a homage to Hulk Hogan, but not to the person Hulk Hogan, like the person behind Hulk Hogan, like like who knows, like Velveteen, it, like the character of Hulk Hogan could have very much stuck with Velveteen Dream. Like, when he was a kid, like, the wrestler Hulk Hogan. But, like, mm-hmm. the actual person, I forgot his real name, like, off the top of my head. That's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Who cares about exactly. that guy? But that guy is garbage and should not – and has a lot of apologizing to do before he could be a decent person again or, like, in my eyes, a decent person again. But Hulk Hogan as a character was an amazing wrestler. He knew how to work a crowd. He was good on the – like, as a wrestler, he was good. And I could see why maybe Velveteen's like, yeah, I like Hulk Hogan, but not the other guy, you know? Mm-hmm. Or <laughs> knowing Velveteen Dream, it could all just be him trolling Hulk Hogan again, which also wouldn't be surprising even a little bit. I'm I'm the, I'm one of those people that are in the trolling camp. I, I firmly believe it's trolling to Hulk Hogan. Um, I think... I mean, I do too. I was just presenting another oh, point no, that I yeah. heard that I thought was interesting. The, the other problem with like bringing back Hulk Hogan, which I, that like, yeah, let's, I, I'm one of those people that also is like, we got to sort of separate the artist from the art. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of situations where the artist is a terrendous, ter- terrendous is not a word, but I'm going to make it up to use in this context. They're a terrendous Fair human enough. being. Um, they do a lot of things that are bad, but the art again, like Hulk Hogan was the way he's able to control a crowd, the way he was do this stuff. The character of Hulk Hogan was an immensely important figure in the uh, history of wrestling. Um, yeah. Uh, so was Andre the Giant, and he had some weird stuff back in the day. So was Ric Flair, and he's done a lot of insane stuff. Kurt Angle has a lot done of done some stuff with. I mean, he's had drug issues. Um, um, the, a lot of these people uh, in the older generation, especially, like a lot of them have different stuff. I mean, look at sort of today is like Lars Sullivan's a great wrestler, but then he has that incident online. Apparently he's a, he's the worst person. To do. He's a terrible human being. Apparently. Yeah. Uh, uh, allegedly he's, he's doing these things online. And it's like, well, what do we have to separate the artist and the artist? The, the other problem is like, yeah, we should separate them at the same time. We shouldn't bring back Hulk Hogan mainly because then it's Hulk Hogan comes out and we're all, that's cool. But then at the same time, the payday is going to, to to terry the payday is going to the guy that's playing hulk hogan if that means he we shouldn't bring these people back because <laughs> then yeah it was just because, helping out the bad one yeah and it makes them think that they could just get it keep getting away with it they're just gonna keep being terrible <laughs> yes because you're not because when i'm sure when when hulk hogan is done and walks back through the curtain uh, and vince hands him a paycheck i'm pretty sure hulk hogan's I'm pretty sure it's Terry receiving that paycheck, not Hulk Hogan. He's not just um, like, ooh, it's payday, brother. Yeah, and then, I don't know, and then rips it in half and then eats it or something? I don't know. Yeah, like tears his shirt That's off. Actually, that feels more like an ultimate warrior, maybe. <laughs> he just tears his like, shirt off and just has a little undershirt that just says, payday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bank of, Hulk, bank of Hogan. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but yeah, I mean, Velveteen Dream, he's one of those people that, I mean, he is definitely an artist and his art of wrestling is he's picked it up quickly. I'm excited to see what happens to him. I think deposit, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I would love to see dream mania running wild at WrestleMania, uh, when he's going to call up maybe after WrestleMania, who knows? Um, uh, I guess we'll find out, yeah. but what's your meatball rating on this match, Mikey? I think like this match was really good. Maybe mm-hmm. like a maybe like a uh, the ending was really like I'm not, the ending where he did the purple rainmaker to the f- floor and just wrecked mm-hmm. himself actually like I I think I screamed and cringed and I was like oh no. <laughs> like I thought oh. I honestly thought they they were going to do it. I thought it was going to be Dream's coronation. I was so excited. I thought they were going to do it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, I it was a lot of close calls that it definitely felt like Dream was going to have it. Apparently not. It looks like Champa has more of a storyline. I feel like he's going to hold it until Gargano gets back in there. Gargano's got to take. The only way Champa loses that title is if Gargano takes it from him. There's no way it doesn't end like that. Yeah, and I think that also just goes to show of how great the trainers, coaches, but also the wrestlers are at wrestling because Velveteen Dream could definitely made it fe- – Champa and Dream definitely made it feel like Dream was going to have it and going to take it. Yeah, that's that's the um, that's the key, right? You want it, you want to keep people guessing. You don't, you never want your shit. You never want to get predictable because that's when it starts getting boring. So, it, like, like up, with NXT, I can never tell. Never tell. Next up, War Games match: Pete Dunn, Ricochet, War Raiders defeated the Undisputed Era. Um, Mikey. 47 minutes of carnage. Some take. How do you feel about it? Uh, the, be- the I think one of the best takeaways from that match was that Undisputed Era had their own chairs. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I, I want to know the, I want to know the kayfabe storyline of who like in the back was like, I feel like it's Kyle O'Reilly was like, dude, we should have our logos on our chairs <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. And everyone's like, yeah, I got it. Yeah, bro. Also the fact that the refs saw, Bobby Fish lock in Pete Dunn with another lock and throw the key away and didn't decide to get bolt cutters until like they had a while before they had another what three minutes before Pete Dunn got in they could have just went back got bolt cutters and cut him out on time but they decided to mm-hmm. to wait <laughs> to let him come in late <laughs> the storyline of it all also is just like it doesn't make it would make more sense if maybe Bobby Fish like hit like super kicked the referees as well. Yeah, that would have made sense because then it's like they're stalling. And, and then stuff. they tried that they tried a different key as if that was gonna work. Like, <laughs> 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 like I don't know what the refs were thinking there. Also, I don't know what Bobby Fish was thinking because how did Undisputed Era plan to win that match if Pete Dunne wasn't in it? <laughs> like, what was yeah, their, what was yeah, their plan? The match doesn't start until Pete Dunne. I don't know that whole that whole that whole spot. Like I like I get it. It's very undisputed era, but it also just kind of made no sense because a that undisputed era can't win, and b the rest were just unbelievably stupid in that one spot. Yeah, yeah. But besides that spot, this match. I mean, do you think it lived up to last year? I don't know. It maybe like I like they were both. I. I watched the War Games match very late because I didn't get into NXT until after. Mm-hmm. Um, I got into NXT like last year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't get to watch War Games till pretty late. Like I didn't get to watch it live, but I saw the match. Um, I thought it was good. I just, I don't know. I don't. I don't know which one was better. They were both really good. I think the other one was. The other one felt more of a match. This one felt. I don't know. It felt weird to me, this one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what it was. Like, yeah, like, it was sort of, um, I think, it may, if anything, I think it, like, sort of loses that, like, sort of nostalgia a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, we had the big old pop of the War Games match last year of, like, the first one in years and decades, and this one's like, okay, and then here's the second one. I mean, it was still good. Like I, I enjoyed no, watching. Yeah, I'm not it. saying it's. I'm not. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that like it loses that sort of like nostalgic feeling that the first one had, which is like, oh, we're having this carnage back, and now it's like, okay. I think that's. I think. Cool. I think that's what it is. I think the first one felt like carnage, and it felt like mayhem and hectic, which made it really good. This one kind of just felt more like a spot fest, and yeah. that kind of put me off a little bit i think do you think i mean honestly i feel like part of that could be from the fact that in this war games match we had two teams of four in the first war match war games match we had was that three teams of three i think so yeah so what that's one more person um plus i mean in in that of course you naturally have sanity so they're naturally going to be more chaotic yeah, sanity. I would say with sanity and AOP and undisputed era, things were like crazy. Yeah, uh, it was I, definitely hectic. This one definitely had some more. I don't know, easier 
I mean, in their defense, I mean, this is also the War Raiders' first takeover. Mm. Like, a Ricochet can probably be fine. Pete Dunn probably needs a little bit of work, but he'll probably be fine. War Raiders, this is also new for them. I also don't think Pete Dunn's the way the style of how Pete Dunn wrestles. I don't think meshes with the war game setting very well. Yeah, I can see that. I can see. Which what, is another thing I noticed. That. Like, I feel like Pete Dunn felt kind of out of place in that match. Not not on the team, but like from how he was wrestling, everyone was like slamming each other into the cage and throwing each other around, and he was just kind of like bending people's fingers back. Yeah, like he's more. Like, he's doing more, chaos, like, carnage to, like, individual joints than, like, throwing people in the cages or jumping off of stuff and hurting yeah, people, people it, it, stuff. It doesn't feel like his style fits the war game setting, so he was a little... It was... I don't know. He, no, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. Well, what, what's your meatball rating on this match? Four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. Maybe, so like, a overall, four. Like, four to four and a half. I, it's it's tough. It's, like, in that, that area. Mm-hmm. But still, overall, an amazing pay per view. Oh, definitely, most absolutely amazing pay per view. I had a great time watching it. Like I loved every minute. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of our criticisms for this pay per view just stemmed down from like really nitpicking, like mm-hmm. really just like you know this this thing maybe not as much. And it's like that's I feel like overall, like if you're nitpicking at that point, that's probably you had a good match. Either either or. Despite the ratings, you had a good match. If we're just nitpicking at this point, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. I just kind of got into the the nitty gritty and just started picking apart random little details. But like overall, it was amazing. Well, speaking of things that are easy to nitpick, let's talk about Survivor Series 2018. Six and one. Six. <laughs> well, then let's talk about the thing that obviously matters and should matter, Vince McMahon. The pre-show, Team SmackDown Six and defeats one. Team Raw. Six and one. In I, I uh, heard Raw was supposed to win. <laughs> yes, there is a rumor going around that Raw Raw was supposed to have a clean sweep, um, and Raw was supposed to win this opening pre-show match. Um, but the at some point, um, the producer of this match, whoever it was, or the wrestlers in the match as well, heard that SmackDown was going to win this match, and so they made it made the match SmackDown doing it, and then. It just happened. Yeah, I and heard. Like, the, oh crap! I heard the results got a little muddled. Like when, like once they got to that, like once, like they had the idea of the match, and then things got a little muddled up, and the guy wasn't know what was supposed to happen. He wasn't know what was supposed to be happening, so he just put the Usos over. Yeah, which is, I mean, fair. And I like, I, I, I did like how it literally came down to the Usos and the revival. Uh, whoever was doing that, good idea. I'm glad it wasn't like Usos Lucha House, Lucha House Party or like. Yeah the B team, but it was the revival and Uso. It was a matchup that we have had three times on our show. Mm-hmm. A, a, an amazing. Thanks and South I just, Dakota. I think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone, I mean, that's what I literally had that thought when I was watching the Usos versus the revival it was like, man, they did it we again. just did the show three times and now it's, they're the final two. WWE. <laughs> they could hear us, man. They're they're definitely we definitely have a listener. We definitely have some sort of South Dakota uh, agent on WV side. <laughs> but if you could give this match a meatball rating, what would you give it? I actually I actually can't give it a meatball rating because I missed the pre show. I'm not. I was out. I I okay, didn't. Get, I I didn't get to see Survivor Series until like it was like 15 minutes in. Okay, that's fine. Um. Well, then we'll just move on to Team Raw, Team SmackDown. I'm giving um, it. I'm giving it five meatballs just on the basis that SmackDown won. Perfect. I love it. I love that. I love that uh, bias. Uh, Team Raw, Team SmackDown. Team Raw picking up the win over Team SmackDown. Thoughts on this match? Um, it was fine. Fair enough. <laughs> it was fine. I I yeah. hate I hate that they're using the fact that Nia really injured someone for heat. I think that's super shitty. <laughs> yeah, it's this. We've I've noticed this trend honestly. I mean, it's it's happened for, I mean, ev- for every year and every decade, it's ever, always happened where someone gets injured and then they use it for heat. I mean, look at like Owen Hart. Um, he what he like injured Stone Cold's knees or his neck. I forget or his back or something. I forget what it was. And he just wore like Hart three sixteen says I broke your neck or whatever it was. Like they've been doing that for forever. 
Hashtag the face breaker also is just a really stupid hashtag, and them calling Naya the face breaker is just the most ridiculous thing, and I think it's so dumb. Yeah. I don't like it's not even it's nothing. Like it's just it's just not good. <laughs> I yeah, I I have noticed this trend even more lately where it's like, man, we're really playing into using real life scenarios, real life Which isn't good, because it's just gonna encourage more people to wrestle dangerously. That is a great point. Like that is a great point. Uh, don't injure people to put yourself over. Yeah, because that is that is will create a Pavlovian response in these wrestlers that's saying like, well, Nia Jax, Nia, Nia Jax could be thinking subconsciously. I mean, this could all be subconscious. We're getting hi, welcome to hit the book psychological textbooks. Um, we we both took psych one along. We know what we're talking about. Of course. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you could you could look at Nia Jax thinking subconsciously, like, hey. If I get, I shouldn't really get better at wrestling because the last time I legitimately injured someone, I got a big push out of it and it got a lot of heat and I needed it. Instead like, of instead of you know being like, oh, wow, Naya injured somebody. Hey, don't do that and like keep her out of action for a little while. Like t- I don't know, I like she should start getting in trouble for doing this. I feel like. <laughs> Anyone should like. I'm not just not even just Nia. Like I don't want to attack Nia because every wrestler, like a ki- like every wrestler is gonna make mistakes. Like that's like that's just part of the game. Of course, you know. Like, but still, if you injure another wrestler, whether it's accident, accidental, or on purpose, there should be a little bit of repercussion for it. Like you should be, like it should be like, hey, don't do that again. Be more careful next time. Instead of like, all right, let's use this for fucking mega heat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's a tough scenario. It's a tough scenario that they're using. I mean, it, like the same thing that happened with Raw that, of course, none of us watch, but uh, with Dean Ambrose yeah. referencing Roman Reigns' leukemia is like, uh, it's, it's a rough one. I mean, yeah, heat is heat, but at the same time, like, there's, I, I feel mean, like, like there's, there's good heat, there's bad heat, and I feel like using people's real-life diseases or injuries – is bad heat. Is bad, especially the ones that you caused uh, is bad it, heat. Yeah. I mean, like, I I think I'm more, like, this is going to sound weird, but I think I'm more okay with them using Roman because I feel like Roman is like, yeah, that's like, I, I feel like Roman has okayed all of this. There's no way they didn't run this by Roman first. Great. Good point. No, like, no shot. They just did it without Roman, like, without telling him, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Roman was probably like, "Yeah, that's the business I'm in." You know, like that—that's fine. Use it. Like yeah, that's just part. It. That's part of the game. Like he understands. Mm-hmm. So, like, I feel like it's. I don't. I don't want to say better because it's still shitty, but. I. I don't know. It just doesn't feel. It it just feels wrong them using Becky getting a severe concussion, to give Nia heat. Like I don't. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't sit well. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, would you give this match? What what meatball rating would you give this match, if possible? Oh, oh sorry. You know why? I th- I just realized why it doesn't feel good. Tell me. It's not like I like because I think it's it's because it's Nia's fault. You know. Yeah. Like it's it's an it's an injury Nia caused. Yeah. But with Roman, Dean didn't get like Dean didn't make that happen. You know, mm-hmm. like it's not his like that's not Dean's fault. No. Yeah. No. It Dean didn't do anything to Roman to give him cancer. Yeah, uh, exactly. Naya Naya botched a punch, legitimately and, and, She legitimately and, railed Becky. Like she, she hit her hard. Broke her face, gave her a concussion, whatever however whatever that is, kayfabe injury, how much of that is real injury. Uh it like she botched a move and injured someone, which she has a history of doing that. Um she botched a move and dislocated Be- Bailey's shoulder and in the same instance, it she's doing this. This has happened to people that were going to have a big match. Bailey was going to have a, a championship match against Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam. She got her shoulder dislocated by Nia Jax, and I believe I'm fairly certain missed out on that SummerSlam and missed and out on the title on match. Survivor Series. It's just yeah. Same thing of Survivor Series with Becky is that we're going to have this big match, and because of Nia's, I mean. And that's the other thing. If your management there is that, look, this is the second time where the same person uh, is causing our plans to get screwed up. 
Maybe there's uh, a correlation mis- there, y'all. Yeah, because of bad botching wrestling. So stop pushing um, them to the moon. You know, like stop you, trying to give them stop trying to give bad wrestlers a push. If they're not good, put them in put them where they could get better instead of back in the spotlight where they're probably just going to hurt more people. Yeah, and also because what came out of this is uh, a, a a good Charlotte Flair Ronda match, but also Nia Ronda's next person to face is Nia Jax. It's like okay, what Nia got out of this was the arm breaker versus match. the face breaker. Yeah, a title match. It's it's not a lot. So meatball rating. What would you give this, Mikey? Uh, I don't even remember which match we're doing. Honestly, we all went off on a tangent there. Yeah, the Team Raw Women's versus Team SmackDown. Oh, like a three. It was fine. Like I said, it was fine. Okay. Uh, Seth Rollins, Shinsuke. Uh, that match was actually pretty good. I was kind of yeah. on and off with it, but otherwise it was fine. Yeah, first time ever. When I, fir- when I first, wa- on my first initial watch, I was on and off with it, but then I watched it again later. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked yeah, it. Yeah, a first time ever matchup enjoyable. of Shinsuke versus Seth Rollins in this universe. I just, I also, I'm really tired of Shinsuke's opponents all doing the exact same thing whenever they face Shinsuke. Oh, the, oh come on, taunt? They always, every single person who fights Shinsuke, at one point in the match will just go, come on! And it's like, all right, we get it. Every person before you has done this. It's not funny anymore. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That is fair. I mean, get to, it, gets it was a pop. it was it was funny the first time. It gets a pop, Mikey. I don't know why it's getting it's so boring. Like everyone is doing yeah, it. it. Literally everybody. That is like that is the continual problem. AJ did it. Jeff Hardy did it. Seth did it. Like that's the continual problem with like wrestling is that like you're just gonna repeat stuff over and over again, and at a certain point it's just like okay, you gotta figure out when this is getting old and when this is getting tired. I'm already tired of it. <laughs> It's not a matchup. You're you're just complaining about a taunt. I mean, no, like I said, the match was good, but just I'm just getting annoyed that people keep doing the exact same thing. What's your meatball rating on this match? Four, I think was it was a solid match. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I, the, I will say though, entire pay per view gets a one because fucking SmackDown lost almost every match, and I'm so fucking mad. Yeah. Because uh, why even do that? Like if you're going to promote that you have two shows, why do you even why do you always make one clearly the under like why do you always make SmackDown clearly the second show? And like in mm-hmm. their eyes, you're like, "Oh, Raw's number 1, obviously. Why won't you promote both of your shows equally and like let them compete? Why is it like, "Oh, yeah, fuck SmackDown, Raw's the best." Like Raw the, gets the, 3 hours, Raw goes 6 and 1, Raw won last year too, I'm pretty sure. Like it's just ridiculous. Like, like why do you keep putting over one show over the other? Like, let them be equal and fight each other. Fuck, and let I'll, the fans I'll decide what up. they like better. Um, let's, I'm trying to shove uh, one down our throats. No, I mean that's these are all great points, Mikey. These are all great points. Um, but let's keep moving along. I'm gonna look up real quickly about uh who won last year. Um, talk to me about AOP defeating the bar. <laughs> The, I was enjoying the match until they did that stupid thing. Until they did, you know what I'm talking about. Until they did the thing. Until, until they, are you saying until Drake Ma- Maverick peed his pants? I was so hype on Drake Maverick. I was so hype on him being this badass manager for the for AOP. Him being like the brains of the operation. I thought it was so cool for him. And then you made him look like a fucking bitch. Like, come on. Uh, uh yes, Team Raw won last year four to three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I heard going back to that real quickly. I hear I heard rumored that a lot of that was done to make Shane, the Commissioner of SmackDown, turn more heel and get upset about his brand. But then on Tuesday he wasn't even a little bit. Yeah, on that's the other problem is like if you're gonna do these things, then let. W- the only the only really talking about Survivor Series that Monday and Tuesday had was 
Xavier Woods complaining about six, six and, one. and one. That's it. That's the that's only thing really had. And and like Charlotte turning, but that was the thing. Uh, I will get. To, never mind. We'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. <laughs> okay. Well, then, uh, meat and doll rating for AOP in the bar. Not much to say here besides just a pissy situation all around. <laughs> da, 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 da. Meatball rating, please. I don't know. It's a three. Like, it was a fine match. The ending took away from it because it was stupid. I'll give it uh, a number one because that is what Drake Maverick da, did. Da, 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 da. Buddy Murphy defeats M- Mustafa Ali to retain the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Mikey. 205 was on the main card. <laughs> Main card, not pre-show. Main card, and they're far. They're in the right that was smack awesome. dab in the middle. That was awesome. I got so I was watching. I was watching Survivor Series, and I saw Buddy Murphy enter in the middle of the like in the middle of the pay per view, and I was like, "No way!" Two hundred five's on the main card. Hey, that was awesome. Yeah, uh, that if anything is going to show that hey, two hundred five live. I, I think that this has been a huge injection for 205 Live as well, is that, hey, not only are they on the main card, they probably had the match of the night. Uh, yeah, that match, that match was, was really, insane. really good. <laughs> it's like, and this is what 205 Live probably needed, was that, hey, don't miss out on the, don't sleep on these guys. They're on the main card of one of the big four pay-per-views. And they're killing it. And, they're, and they killed it. That Yeah, that match was nuts. Mm-hmm. What's your meatball rating on this? Four point seven. Four point seven. Wow. Maybe, maybe, probably uh, four point seven. Maybe a five because that match was so good. So good. Team Raw, Team SmackDown, and the men's side. Eh. <laughs> I'm mad that Samoa Joe got squashed. <laughs> yeah, I. We've heard rumor of maybe him having an injury. Yeah, that yeah, that's what I heard too. That he was maybe injured. Also, I I hate that SmackDown was winning and then Braun Strowman. <laughs> like, I, like yeah. we get it, we get it. He's a monster. He's big. He could squash a bunch. Of, like, we understand. We get it. Mm-hmm. Stop putting him over. We he's already over. We don't need this anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely had sort of that feeling surrounding it. Well, let's talk about a meatball rating for this matchup. It's it's it's, sa- it's the same thing. I think it's t- in my brain, it's like the same thing as the Raw Women's, except the like the Raw and SmackDown Women's, except just like a little less because it was just like meh. Like it was fine. Like I said, it was like okay. Like there was mm-hmm. nothing exciting. Like sure, Drew McIntyre looked cool. I guess. <laughs> it not if that doesn't sum up this matchup. Drew McIntyre looked cool, but like he always does, you know. Yeah, it's Drew McIntyre. He has the appeal. I mean, yeah, he's gonna be good no matter what. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I imagine if you give a three to the Raw women's Raw and SmackDown women's matchup, you'll give what two point five? Yeah, that was what I was going for. Um, for Team Raw and Team SmackDown. What about Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair? Ronda Rousey wins after disqualification from Charlotte Flair. That ending was made for Becky. That's. That's fair. That's a fair There's, argument to make. That ending was made was that ending of that match was made for Becky to go off on Charlotte. And mm-hmm. it would have been amazing. Mhm. It the it felt way less impactful when it was Charlotte in that moment. I I had a similar thought with like it look it feels like this was made for Becky and then of course on SmackDown the next Tuesday that whole interaction with Charlotte Flair and Becky and all that stuff. It, it was like this feels like this also should have been for Becky, probably. Mm-hmm. Do you, Her, like n- like like Charlotte beating up on the Iconics? Mm-hmm. I had this. I had this thought. Is it better or worse that Becky was not in this match? Then, if that ending and what happened on SmackDown Live was pro- possibly for Becky, is it better or worse that she didn't end up having that? I think it. I mean, I don't think Becky's hurt either way. Like I think Becky's gonna stay hot even through her injury because the the way she's carrying herself on social media mm-hmm. is is keeping her is keeping her fresh. I think like literally every time she tweets, she gets herself heat again, and like she gets herself people. When I say heat, I guess I mean like good heat. Like she just keeps 
fucking roasting people, you know? It's great. Mm-hmm. Like, she's still being a badass, even though she's not in the ring and she's not on TV. She's still just being a badass and being Becky, and people are still loving her. So, I don't think it's going to hurt Becky that she didn't have that, but I think it would have... I don't know. It probably would have helped. I mean, it, I mean, her tearing apart Ronda Rousey and the Iconics couldn't hurt, right? Like, Yeah, the reason I thought that is that, like, I'm thinking about, you know, when Becky returns... How big that pop will be. Oh, this, the pop is going to be huge. I hope she comes back with a new theme song. She needs yeah, a new I also, I think it's I, time. I think it'll be a good idea. Like, I am in love with Becky's theme song right now, but it doesn't fit who she is. No, it it's doesn't still fit like the, the baby face. Quite. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Mm-hmm. Like, it's. She needs, she needs something new. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it would be a perfect time as well. Because you know. It would be. You know that pop of Becky Lynch coming back would be great. And that, that is what my thought became is that like, Hey, maybe this could be better for Becky. Like the legend of the man, maybe this could be better for that. And that like, and that like the whole argument for the man is that they have always been this underdog. They've always been put on the bottom. And it's like, you know what? Now I'm going to take what's mine. And it's just another instance where like something was taken away from them. Oh yeah, she's she's gonna be pissed. Yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, what's your meatball rating on this matchup? Uh, I think it's just another three. Like like the mat, I think the match was good. I'll, I'll bump it up to a three and a half because the match was good. Like the match, but like it, it's Charlotte. Like Charlotte's pretty good in the ring, and she definitely could carry a match like that. So I had no doubt mm-hmm. it was gonna be good, but I knew with Becky it would have been great. So it like. Kind of, in my eyes, it kind of hurt me watching the match because I was like, that could have been Becky, like the whole time, you know. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Um, I think I well, think with finally... the, sorry, I think with the circumstances Oops. put forward, it was a good match anyway. Like like Charlotte did a yeah, good job. I agreed. Agreed. I completely agree with that. Uh, moving forward, final matchup, the main event: Brock Lesnar versus Daniel Bryan. I was so surprised that I actually enjoyed a Brock Lesnar match. <laughs> I was so ready for that match to be terrible. Mm-hmm. I, I, even though Daniel, Bry- like I get it. Daniel Bryan was in it. How could it be terrible? It's Daniel Bryan. I expected that match to be really bad and it made to, it to make Daniel Bryan look really weak. And it didn't, it was really good. Mm-hmm. Brock sold like a fucking champion for Daniel. Mm-hmm. Like Brock selling was amazing. Daniel's selling was amazing. The fact that he cut that amazing promo on SmackDown, explaining why he was basically just letting Brock beat the crap out of him, what made it even more amazing. Because, like, every like the match and the follow up just made that match very good. You know, yeah, like the match was good, but then the follow up that Daniel Bryan gave made it very good. Yeah, because then you like. If you like go back and watch the match, you would you could see all the like, nuances that Daniel Bryan was pointing out, and it's like, oh hey, maybe he was doing that, you know? Like it was sick. It was really really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it was it, honestly. Um, I, if anything, I feel like the if it's weird to say, weird to say this, but I feel like I think everyone would agree with it. Um, the person that got the most shine out of this match is probably Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I agree with that. Is that he he really he really looked great in this match and i think mm-hmm. after you know the very very tiring leg of his uh his uh um what's it called his uh universal title run i think this sort of like he needed like a big we we need to remind ourselves that he is the beast and i think yeah. he sort of got that in us a little bit more i think to me Every other, like, match Brock Lesnar was in that I didn't like, it just, like, I know they they played up the character of, oh, I'm Brock Lesnar, I don't care, but, like, I feel like he genuinely didn't, like, when he was doing the other matches, like, with Roman and with Goldberg. Like, I feel like he didn't give a shit. Like, he was just like, I'm here for the paycheck, cool, spot fest, all right, goodbye. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this Daniel Bryan match, he actually gave a shit, and when Brock gives a shit, he's good. Like, he's, like, when Brock gives a shit, he's great. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. And it, it I think also the fact that this was a fresh matchup. I mean, look at AJ Styles last year is that that was a fresh matchup for Brock and that mm-hmm. was amazing match. That was an amazing exactly. match. I think the fact that like he is having these fresh never before seen matchups especially like knowing for Brock probably that knowing that this is probably only going to happen once mm. uh this de- like, definitely gave him more of a reason to like go out there and like show what he's got exactly if he like if he performed like this every match and more consistently showed up i wouldn't mind that he had that title like i'd be kind of amped about it you know but mm-hmm. it's just it's just sits bad with me because of the fact that he just barely ever showed up <laughs> yeah 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 uh, what's your me- but like I said, if he if he showed up consistently and gave gave a shit every match like that, I'd be fine with yeah. him. What's your meatball mating meatball mating meatball <laughs> rating on this matchup? Uh, four point seven five. It was really good. Yeah, it was top down. Uh, not I'm as on- good as maybe as Takeover, but of course that always seems to be the case. Uh, oh. but you know, meh to good Survivor Series. It sounds mm-hmm. like. I'm only not giving Brock Lesnar and Daniel Bryan a five because of how scary those Germans were to Bryan. He took, oh my God. He took those. Selling. Oh my God. The way he took those, I was, I, I had to look away. I was so scared. Yeah. I was like, it, Oh my God, he's landing right on his neck every fucking time. I was horrified. That I, if anything, that definitely has like, it's weird, but that, horrendous neck injury that he received and now he's come back with or not having um he definitely has like a weird ace in his hole now is that he can like really sell a neck injury Mm -hmm. because all of us will be terrified and all of us will believe any 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 selling he daniel bryan does on towards his neck all, all of scared. us will immediately we're think frightened. we'll be terrified. We're immediately into it because we're like, oh, my God, he's he's dead. He's, this is something bad. Yeah, like, oh, my um, God, he's out again. That's it. That's it. That's it for Daniel Bryan. He's over. Yeah. Uh, he's – yeah, he's definitely <laughs> – Every time every time he sells his neck, it might be the end of his career, which scares the hell out of everybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it is terrifying. Um, okay, well, that is that for our review of TakeOver, War Games, and Survivor Series 2018. 